What's up everyone, it's Duncan from Overland Journals. Welcome to another weekly video. Today, another tutorial on HEMA maps. Welcome back. If you are new to my channel, please hit that subscription button and the notification bell because my channel is all about sharing my experiences in overlanding with the rest of the community and I bring out a video every single week. Now, today's video is on HEMA maps. I have done a few tutorials on using HEMA maps before. Go and check them out in the playlist in the channel. I'll also leave links in the description below. Well, I had a number of subscribers write to me asking me about various issues they're having with using HEMA maps. Now some of the features are not as user friendly as we ordinary folk would like them to be. So I have replied to them and I've solved their issues but at the same time I thought I might as well share it with, with everybody else so that in the hope that it'll help you. So I'm going to deal in a couple of things today. One is the when you do a create a route on HEMA cloud and then sync it to the, the tablet or whatever device that you've got, your mobile device, some of the information does not get transferred. Particularly when you create a route on HEMA Cloud, the route that you've created, you can highlight, get it to highlight in a particular color of your choice. Now, you would expect when you do the syncing, it would appear in your device as well. But sometimes that doesn't happen. Why? Don't ask me, I have no clue. I have had the same problem myself. So I'm going to touch on that. Secondly, on HEMA Cloud, once you've gone on a trip, you've created a route and you come back and you're all very excited and you want to upload this to your HEMA Cloud and perhaps share with friends or general public. And one of the cool features HEMA allows is you can upload pictures. Now you can tag these pictures to a waypoint. So you know everybody gets a better idea of what to expect at that each particular location. But if you wanted to delete a picture, then it's not as easy. Well, it is an easy thing to do, but it's the, the, the user interface is not so great. So I'll share with you today how to go and delete a picture if you wanted to. Thirdly, I'll talk about various different map layers and the uses you can get out of it because again, I had a number of subscribers write to me and ask me about the different map layers. And then finally, I'll touch on a few bits and pieces which I think would be useful to you if you're, if you're particularly new to using HEMA maps. So stick around and let's get this tutorial underway. At the end of this video, if you found it useful, please give it a thumbs up and share it with others so that they will benefit from the video as well. If you've got questions, leave it in the comments below. Okay, so on to the very first issue. That is you create a route on HEMA cloud, you have it synced over to your device but then now the outline of the route doesn't appear. You can see the outline of the route on your HEMA Cloud account on the main map, but the same route on your tablet, it's been synced, it tells you it's been synced, but you can't see it. It can drive you insane. I've been, th been through this myself. It's one of those bugs, I think, where HEMA never really figured it out or never bothered to, I don't know, but I'll show you how to fix it. Okay, so once you're in your tablet and if you pull down the menu, where you get all your settings and routes and so on, and you go to routes, all the routes that you've synced, the list of those routes will come up. Now, what you need to look at is look at the list of routes and onto the left of each route name, you should see a kind of like an outline of the, the route. Now, sometimes, now in my case, if you look at the route for Mount Day to Dalhousie Springs, you will see that it does not have color outlining. So what that means is when I synced it from my main map on HEMA Cloud, as I said, for some unknown reason, it didn't bother to do that. So the simplest fix is tap onto the space, which is to the left of the route name, and you will get a color wheel that pops up that is allowing you to set the choice of a color for that particular route. So drag it across to whichever color of your choice and I'm going to hit save. Moment I hit save, you will see the route just appeared next to the name of the route. 
Now I activate that by hitting the on button onto the right of the screen. Go to my main map. If you go to the main map, as you can see on my screen, the outline appears. So it's an easy fix. It's just that it can be frustrating when, you, when you're going through it for the first time. Now let's get on to the second one where you, about deleting pictures on HEMA Cloud. That's an easy fix too. So let's dive into my HEMA Cloud. Okay, so I'm in my HEMA Cloud account. So what I do is I've come home, I've synced all my routes from a trip and I'm going to go into those particular routes. So what I do is I pull down the menu under my account name and I go to routes and all the routes that I had just synced from my tablet or my mobile device into HEMA Cloud will appear. It's only three in, in this particular example. And let's say the route Mount Day to Dalhousie Springs. So click on that and that route appears on the screen. Now, I want to attach a picture or pictures to the route so that you know, it gives me an idea of what I saw and what to expect and so on. So all I do is go to the top here where it says upload photos. It's simple as that. Click on that and then select a file. And there you go, picture, the picture attached onto my route. And there you go, that's the picture just I just attached. And now this is where the issue comes in and this is where a lot of subscribers of mine who wrote to me, particularly those who are new to HEMA Maps, have been struggling with is now let's say you want to get rid of this picture. How do you get rid of it? The easiest way to do it is go back to the pull down menu, which is in, under your account name and go to waypoints, go to waypoints and a list of your waypoints will come up. Within the list of waypoints will also be the images that you just uploaded or you've been uploading over time. So in my case, the very top one, DTI 16 1254, is the image that I just attached. Now, why HEMA puts it all together along with your waypoints, I don't know, but you, all your pictures that you upload, and I, I guess I, I am assuming the reason why they did that is because you're associating an image to a waypoint. So they group them all together. That's fine. That's not a problem. But it, it is the process of delete, deleting that's not as user friendly. So here it is. So it's in, listed amongst all your waypoints. So all you do is go across to that picture that you want to delete. In my case, it's the image right at the top. Tick it and hit the delete button. Now, if you want to just confirm that, go back to routes and go back to that particular route that I was working on. And there you go. The picture has disappeared. There's no more pictures available. So the, for the next part, I want to share with you the various different map layers and what uses they have for you. So let's get back in the device. And on the extreme top right corner, you will see the map layers that's available to you. Tap on that and pull down the menu. When you do that, you will see the HEMA Explorer map layer. That's the base map layer that's always active. Just below that, you get all the different map layers that's available to you. So in my case, I've got Great Desert Tracks, High Country, Fraser Island, and so on. And I've also got the satellite overlay, the street overlay, and terrain overlay, and so on. So all you do is when you want to activate any particular layer, all you do is drag it across and lay it over the base map. Now I just laid the great desert tracks. There you go, the desert track has been overlaid. I'll do that demo again. So I'm gonna go back in there and I'm gonna get rid of the, that particular layer and you'll see that just disappeared off as a layer. So I'm gonna bring it back in again and drop it off. There you go, it came back on. It's, it's very simple, it's very easy. Now the other cool feature is I'm gonna get desert tracks out for the moment. And let's say I wanna get a satellite view of the same area. Take it and drag, drag it on top of the base layer and there you go, you get the satellite view coming up. Similarly, let's go and see what the terrain layer is like. There you go, drop it over and the terrain comes up. I don't find the terrain layer as detailed as I would like, but then again, when you go this cheaper option where you are downloading from the cloud and putting it into a device of your own, it's not as detailed, but it is nevertheless sufficient as far as I'm concerned. Play around with the different layers and get a feel for it. But the other things I wanted to show you was if you scroll down further, 
you get these other overlayers which overlays which you can use like accommodation facility service information and so on and so forth so if you press on accommodation there you go so if you're looking for accommodation bush camping camps caravan parks and so on you can activate each and every one of these by tapping on it so there you go i just tapped on bush camping and that got activated if i want to find a camp same thing and as i do this it will appear on the main map where various accommodation is uh, if i go further deep in there you go you get the bush camps that's available and so on my, now if i took it all off all these little markings will disappear let me do you a demonstration there take it all out and there you go they all just disappeared so if you if you're on a travel let's say you're out in the bush somewhere and you want to figure out where you can do bush camping there you got all you got to do is activate the bush camping layer and all that information will come up similarly as with accommodation you can bring up facilities so there you go if you bring out the facilities features uh, where you can you know if you're looking for a winery if you're looking for a lookout if you're looking for a picnic area rest area toilets there you go there's a whole heap of information a boat ramp and so on where you want to collect water it's there switch it on or off depending on what you want now what i do i don't want usually keep everything activated because that becomes an information overload so what i do is i activate whatever that is i'm looking for so i'm out in the bush somewhere uh, out in the outback and i want a particular place where i can get some water then that's all i will activate i'll deactivate everything else similarly with if i go to service you get all the services emergency mechanical repairs police stations post offices and so on and then if you go to information if you want to get information on parks and wildlife where you can find the rangers visitor centers and so on again activate it so play around with these layers and you will find there's a whole heap of information that's available to you finally before i end this video what you can also do is go on to the main pull down menu and i just wanted to show you something else here see where it says gps status well tap on that and what that does is it tells you the number of satellites the device is picking up now as you can see right now where i am it's only picking up four satellites it can pick up a lot more than that but the reason i'm mentioning this is the lesser the number of satellites the device is picking up the level of accuracy also drops off right now i'm in my shed so the signal is not as clear as the device would like it to be nevertheless accuracy is pretty good so as you if you come down here where it says plus minus six meters what that means is that the accuracy can be off by plus or minus six meters i have been instances where i've been inside the vehicle inside the 4b and it was only picking up one satellite and the accuracy was off as by as much as 75 meters so why i'm mentioning this is always keep an eye on the accuracy levels especially out on bush tracks where you come to a point where there can be several tracks going off in various different directions and you are looking for that particular turn off which you see on the map make sure the accuracy is as minimum as possible because if it is off by 50 to 60 meters as it can happen depending on how many satellites is picking up or not picking up that could give you a bit of a problem so i know i talked about various little nagging issues which is you know i find which are not user friendly so it is a bit frustrating if you're if you're really new to using hema maps you will find it frustrating i went through the, through it myself and uh, used a lot of colorful words at hema but when you look at all the information that's available to you, you kind of tend to forget all that once you got, got through it. So spend some time, learn all the features that's available to you. If you've got questions, leave them in the comments below. I'm always happy to help and share whatever knowledge I've got. And, um, and then get out there and start using it. It's a good, good tool to have. So I hope you found this video useful. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, please 
subscribe and hit that notification bell because I bring out a video every single week. Share it with your friends. That helps my channel to grow and I really appreciate all the support that you guys are giving me. And I'll see you again in another video in a week's time. Thank you for watching.